We want to hit another uh, topic that has emerged again and again in the news recently, socialism. Socialism, of course, has a long, a century-long track record of creating human misery and destroying countries from Russia to Venezuela. But the ideology has proven impossible to kill, and it is flourishing or appears to be flourishing in the modern Democratic Party. Democrats as a whole now say they view socialism more favorably than they do capitalism. Politicians like Bernie Sanders and Cynthia Nixon proudly call themselves socialists. Maybe there's a little there's a little taint to socialism that turns people I don't, off. I don't really think so. I, I think the real issue is that the ideas that we have been talking about, almost without exception, Stephen, are now ideas that are mainstream ideas that are supported by the vast majority of the American people. Republicans are going to call us socialists no matter what we do. So we might as well give them the real thing. Give them the real thing. But what is the real thing? And what are they talking about when they say they are socialists? David Azrat has thought a lot about this. He's director of the B. Kenneth Simon Center for Principles and Politics at the Heritage Foundation in Washington. And he joins us tonight. David, thank you for coming on. So all of us have watched kind of slack jawed as a, a, a growing number of ascendant Democratic politicians have embraced socialism. What are they saying when they say they're socialists? What does that mean? I think you should look at the policies they support rather than the labels they use. And there you'll find that what they're calling socialism is basically just liberalism. They want more regulations on the private sectors and they want bigger entitlements. So basically socialism has become a synonym for a more aggressive, self-confident brand of liberalism. And it's definitely spreading. But Marxist-Leninist socialism, the intermediary stage on the way to communism, that's completely dead in the U.S. and enjoys almost no support. So I would tell my friends on the right not to panic that this is not the birth of communism. What it is just is a renaissance, more aggressive form of uh, progressivism. No more Bill Clinton, the era of big government is over, but a, an assertive and demanding and self-confident form of liberalism. It does seem like though somebody has failed, maybe it was parents, maybe it was teachers, maybe it was both, in making the term socialism uh, unacceptable. I mean, no one is espousing Nazism. That's been obviously discredited and for good reason. Socialism, self-described socialist, murdered tens of millions of people in the last hundred years. Why is the word itself not more verboten? I mean, look at what we teach in our schools. By and large, there are only three things that kids learn about the past. Nazism, Jim Crow, and slavery. And they know that that's bad. Socialism killed and communism killed 100 million people in the 20th century, but that's not really taught. And then the other thing to keep in mind is 2008. 2008 happens, and immediately the left reacted and said, this is capitalism. This is the legacy of Reagan. Right. This is unregulated greed. It's the private sector running amok and trampling over the well-being of Americans. And then the pollsters come along and they give the American people a choice between capitalism, which to many on the left and to millennials means 2008, or socialism, which has come to mean kind of we're all in this together, we take care of one another, or the government gives us free stuff. And people say, well, I sure as hell am not going to support capitalism, therefore I'm going to support socialism. I think it's more an indictment of our failure to properly teach history. And look, the fact right. also that words evolve and their meaning changes over time and i think today for a lot of people socialism just means big government libertarians and and some conservatives never really reckoned with the deep resentment about the bank bailouts i always thought did it ever occur to them that you know people looked at that if you're a non-economist like me and you think well if my business fails no one bails me out but we're bailing out these billion dollar banks i mean people kind of hated that and why wouldn't they and I also think we didn't offer a simple counter narrative. I mean, there have been very intelligent and profound explanations offered on the right by economists of what happened. But uh, to put it bluntly, what's our talking point? Uh, and, and I've been Good in point. D.C. now for 10 years. I still don't know what it is so that I think in the popular consciousness, 2008 was caused by deregulation and greed, which I think you and I both know is not the case. But we kind of yes. lost that battle. David Azrab, one of the smartest observers of all this. Thank you for joining us tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you, Tucker.